We are approaching 1 million subscribers on our YouTube channel. Can't believe we're even close to this. Can't thank you guys enough. If you haven't already, please go hit that subscribe button. Lots of fun NBA content coming your way. Hi, hello, and welcome to a Dunker Spot Breakdown. I am Nikaias Duncan, joined by my guy Steve Jones Jr., and we are here to talk about the musical stylings of Luka Doncic. Yes, we are here to break down some tape. I know sometimes when we pop up on the channel, our faces are not JJ, but <laughs> we are here for a reason. So we're going to take a little peek behind the curtain of what the Dunker Spot does. We watch a lot of tape, break down a lot of hoops, going to show you exactly what we can do. Keep on coming back for more. Luka has been on an absolute tear to start the season, averaging 33.8 points per game on insane shooting splits, converting 60.5% of his twos, 42% of his threes on over 11 attempts per game, while also tossing in nearly 10 dimes a game. Defenses have not had fun trying to deal with this dude, and the Dallas Mavericks have also done a great job of clearing space for Luka to work to make it even more difficult to deal with Luka. We want to go over a few clips to highlight what the Mavericks are doing, how teams are trying to counter what the Mavs are doing, and how Luka ultimately renders a lot of these counters moot. So we're going to start with this high pick and roll late in the first quarter against the San Antonio Spurs. The Wimby debut, Luka going to roll the ball up the floor so he gets a full 24. We're going to freeze it here as Derek Lively sets this high step up screen. You're going to note that the right wing is completely clear. That is going to give Derek Lively a lot of room to roll into. Or if Luka wants to snake this pick and roll and really attack Zach Collins in space, he's going to have a lot of room to operate with. Josh Green in his corner, Malachi Branham also in his corner, not going to want to provide a whole lot of help. Maxi Cleaver here on the left wing. You typically don't get high help on this side of the floor, so if Luka wants to go to his left, if he can beat that layer, he's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And you will note Trey Jones in his left corner. If he becomes the low man here, that is incredibly small help. So Dallas has mapped out the floor in a way to make it very difficult to deal with this pick and roll, in addition to Luka just being very good at basketball. So as we roll it, Luka's going to come off the screen. He gets Jeremy Sohan on his back. You see the space that Derrick Lively has to roll into. And again, this right wing is completely clear. Luka slow plays it. And if we freeze it here, Luka basically gets inside the free throw line unimpeded. You don't get real help here. And it's just a 2v1. Zach Collins has to decide, am I contesting a potential floater from Luka? Or am I going to hold, you know, am I going to sit back here and try to prevent the lob, the lob from Derrick Lively? Zach Collins doesn't really make a decision. Luka makes his. Derek Lively on his head top. And if you, if you bring it back to the angle, just to bounce off what you were saying, the high pick and roll is what makes this even tougher. Luka now gets to get downhill with space, and now he gets to lead the dance to a degree. So if you let it keep rolling, he's able to survey the floor. Sohan's working to get back. And then the one thing, if you bring back just a little bit more, that Luka always does, he does a great job of being physical and not letting his defender navigate and get back in front of him. So now, because of that, Sohan's still working to recover. Zach Collins is in between. You know that he didn't make a decision, but he's engaged. So he can't necessarily commit to Luka, and he can't necessarily commit to that role. Obviously, you know, if you're a Spurs fan, you'd like to have the weak sign in a little bit more. But that's kind of the point of a drop. Luka leads the dance, able to make the play he wants to make. It's just tremendous work. The patience here. Jeremy Sohan can never get back in front. Really good placement on this pass. And Derek Lively, how much fun is Luca having passing the ball to that guy? Are we allowed to quote, uh, quote like rap lyrics? Because it's a lot. <laughs> That's a good shot. Uh, we flow a little bit later into this game. Going to get a pick and roll or rescreen here for Derek Lively. And once again, you'll notice that right wing is going to be free if they want to get there. This left wing also free. And with Kyrie Irving being one pass away, you, again, you don't typically get the high help or the high dig here. But even if you want to, you got to worry about Kyrie Irving, a ridiculously good shooter and scorer, being one pass away. And so Luca recognizes very early on, I just have my left hand if I want to. I can just take this drive. And so all I need to do is make sure I run my defender, Keldon Johnson, into the screen, get him behind me. And similar to the first clip, I can just kind of lead the dance, see what Zach Collin does. Whatever move he makes, I can make him wrong with a pass or a shot attempt. So as he comes off the screen, pushes ahead, Keldon Johnson's behind the play, it is a 2v1. You see the help starting to peel in a little bit, but you're not going to get a super aggressive dig from Trey Jones. He backs right out. And once again, defender on the back, Zach Collins trying to survey what Luka Doncic is trying to do. We get this awesome deceleration, hit the brakes from Luka as Keldon Johnson trying to work back into the play, and a ridiculous finish in an add one for Luka Doncic. And just to bring it back, just to add to what you were saying, because you were right on point, two things I'd point out. 
Notice Wimbenyama is in that strong side. He's in that other corner now. So now if you talk about Luka Martin space, I don't have to deal with that guy. <laughs> I don't have to deal with that guy. And then the second thing is, to add to your Kyrie point, he's, his spacing is aligned with the free throw line, so he does have room for that left hand. It probably looks like, hey, we should help off Josh Green. The issue is, if you commit that level of early help, one, it's a drop. You don't want to do all that. The second part is, it's a kick. And if you, there's even a thought of a rotation, it's an extra pass to Kyrie. So that's where Dallas can kind of layer things and keep pressure on teams. Really good work. And that is very difficult to do, to just stop on a dime like that. What a bucket from Luka. And it's not just pick and roll in that Dallas is intentional about clearing space for Luka. You see here, they're setting up a stagger on the left side of the floor for Tim Hardaway Jr. They can flow into a lot of different things from here. It could be Tim Hardaway Jr. coming off. Luka passes it to him, passes it back. They can flow into get action from there. They can kind of set flow into like a double drag type action where Tim Hardaway Jr. sets the second screen. Maxi Cleaver here flips it as the second screener. But what this ends up being on this possession is just a decoy. We want to get Zach Collins' head turned here. We want him occupied. So once again, right wing completely cleared. Has some room on the left side, but again, you got the stagger going there. This right wing completely clear with Grant Williams in this corner. You typically don't want to have help from the strong side corner if you can help it. And you will see on this play, as Luca uses that as a decoy, gets downhill. Chetty's starting to commit, but then a little chop step like, ah, I, now I kind of have to commit now. He gets in the way, trips Luca, gets the foul call. It's just a tough position that the Dallas Mavericks are able to put teams in. And if you bring it back, just to add to your point, uh, part of the part of the design is, is really difficult. I know a lot of people like to see and want to see Luca off ball more. He'll be involved in that stagger sometimes, so keep an eye on that as the season progresses. But when you talk about help defense and help concepts, usually you want to have early help. You want to show bodies in the lane to dis, uh, discourage drives from star players. There's no way to get boxes and elbows here. So your early help is right now Chetty. Who is Chetty guarding? Grant Williams. What does Grant Williams do? Take and make corner threes for the majority of the scenario. So even if you want to help, your help is going to be late and your help is going to be seen. So even as Chetty flies in, Luca is going to initiate contact to get this foul. If he wanted to, that pass could be there. There would be absolutely no rotation behind him. And as Steve mentioned, corner threes are what Grant Williams does. Very comfortable taking those shots. And Luka gets to the free throw line, which is something that he's been able to do pretty often to start this season. And so, again, it doesn't have to just be pure pick and roll. Dow's very intentional about the help. Here's a handoff here. Pitch to Dwight Powell. Luka fakes the screen, comes off the handoff. Brooklyn going to switch. And so now you have old friend Dorian Finney-Smith on Luka Doncic. But as we freeze it here, look at what we got. Left wing completely empty. You see Grant Williams in that left corner. Mikael Bridges communicated with Cam Johnson, like, hey, pick up Seth Curry, also a really good shooter. So I can try to zone up here and try to cut off some of the space. But as Luca gets into his dance, all he sees right now, this pocket of space and then this pocket of space if he wants to go that way. So now he's just worried about shifting the feet of Dorian. Gets downhill. Royce O'Neal was peeled in, but he can't commit fully to the help for Luca Doncic as he's driving to his left hand. Again, you don't want to provide that strong side help. Now it's just a one-on-one -on -one versus Luca. Gets the bump, pushes it off glass. And that's easy work for Luca. And then if you bring it back to the start, just to just to continue to operate off that, it's pretty good defense from mm -hmm. Brooklyn. It's pretty good set design. You got a handoff. You got Curry coming off a baseline screen. They navigate all of that. The biggest thing you see is how Luca surveys the floor. Because if you look at the right side of the action, Macau Bridges is coming to show help. He's coming to be there at the elbow as it progresses. And hey, that's where defensively you want to communicate, send him this way. Luca, before you get the chance to really settle in, he's gone to his left. Mm -hmm. And so now, because of what he does, he's able to initiate contact. He doesn't have to get all the way to the basket. He can get to a spot. He can rise up. So the little tweaks, as you mentioned, Nikaias, about the spacing and the pressure they put on you on display here. There you go. And now he's flowing to a pick and roll. As you mentioned a little bit earlier with the stagger, not necessarily stagger setup, but you see the example of Tim Hardaway Jr. being a screener in their double drag actions. So as he comes off, we can pause it here. Left wing completely open, right wing completely open. Not only is that right wing open as Luca's flowing from left to right, look at who's in the corner. It's Grant Williams again, but more importantly, look at who's being defended by Grant Williams. It Xavier Tillman is the other big on the floor for Memphis. So as you have Jaron in the action initially, and you have Xavier Tillman over here on the strong side, 
That means the low man, weak side help, is going to be Zaire Williams, who is a wing. He's not a big. And if this turns into Derek Lively rolling, which it will, in theory, that is a jump ball battle between Derek Lively and Zaire Williams. That is not the setup that you want as a defense, even though Zaire Williams is a good athlete. As we flow into this double drag, we note the spacing here. That wing's open. You're not going to get an extra layer of help. It is 2v2. Luca has Desmond Bain slightly behind him. Derek Lively rolling into space with no tag coming. And Luca just lost that sucker over the outstretched arms of Jaron, and that is an easy one. And to bring it back, and I, I know we're talking Luca here, but uh, my, my defensive brain is looking at the weak side defense like, hey, you kind of need to be in if that's going <laughs> to be the case. So no disrespect to Zaire. You probably want him in sooner on that pick and roll. But if you hold it here, again, now Luke is able to guide the space. And because you put two guards in it, even if you go back to the start, that first guard-to-guard -guard screen, you're thinking switch. You got to communicate as a defense what's behind it. But because you're thinking switch on that first one, Luke has got the advantage and he's got space. So now you have Marcus Smart who's trying to fight over, Desmond Bain who's trying, Desmond Bain who's trying to switch. And now you have Luka getting downhill. Because Jaron is up at the level. Now he's dropping back. And if you allow Luca to have that space and lead the dance, he usually gets the result he wants. And just to quickly bounce off of that and to toss a hat tip, got to communicate the switch if necessary. Look at Derek Lively screening Desmond Bain here. Has contact on Jaron and also hits Desmond Bain on this. So both guys trying to figure out, hey, what, how are we navigating this? What are we going to do? Jaron playing this a little bit higher because of that initial bump. And so Luca recognizes, I got Desmond Bain behind me. Jaron is more committed to me than he is to Derek Lively. And as you mentioned, Steve, that weak side help not peeled in all the way. And that is going to open up the lob for the rookie. It's really good stuff. So now we see Noor double drag. We got Kyrie Irving and Josh Green as your screeners this time. Brooklyn going to switch all of this. And we're going to see them be a little bit more committed to the help. So Kyrie Irving, one pass away. I'm not going to say Ben Simmons doesn't care, but he certainly has an at the presence. Right wing clear, but you do see the help starting to peel in a little bit. As we get this help, you get the weak side zone. Josh Green going to try to set this pin in, or at the very least, occupy Spencer Dinwiddie. And this is just the greatness of Luka Doncic as a passer. Muscles through the help, draws two. Ridiculous pass to the corner. We get minimal dip for Tim Hardaway Jr. Nice closeout for Spencer Dinwiddie. It does not matter. The toughest part is because they have Tim Hardaway Jr. and Kyrie spaced on this left side. Ben Simmons is there for nail help, but it's not going to be a double. You did switch to stay out of rotation, but do you want Cam Thomas on Luka? Macau Bridge is thinking he needs the help, and that is also going to put, keep the pressure on because now that skip is there. If the help's not coming from the nail, you got the commitment late, and Luka can see the floor and make the plays he wants to. Going to flow into this one. Luka pushing in transition. You see the early nail help Dornian fin from Dorian Finney-Smith. Gets back out to Maxi. And now you're going to see this cut from Grant Williams. And what does that cut do? As this is just an isolation opportunity, it clears that right wing. You got Josh Green in that corner. Mikael Bridges thinking, should I help? Should I not? Luca attacking the smaller. Dennis Smith Jr. gets the bump, creates a little bit of space, gets another bump, and there's a foul drawn. Not a sexy play, but Grant Williams cutting from that wing, clears space for Luca. He goes one-on-one, -on -one, and he showcases how difficult he is to deal with when he does go one-on-one. -on -one. And a little bit later, we get a pick and roll. This is going to be switched. You're once again going to see that help peeled in. Tim Hardaway Jr., one pass away. But you see the pocket of space he has to the left wing. Lonnie Walker trying to take some of it away. You can see him playing a little bit higher than usual off of this corner. But this is also the greatness of Luka Doncic. Even when you do the right thing, you peel in your help early. You get the swipe. We're going to take away space. He muscles through footwork. The ball's in the air before that arm even comes up. And this is just a horse shot. I was about to say, you mentioned some of the different ways they're trying to open things up. One of the big counters they have for Luka is the post-up. And so he can start to back down and put pressure on you early. You see Vooch is trying to pull over and show help. He's got to clear. So Luka, what he does, if you hold it, he's always surveying the court. So he's backing down to wait and see. Where's the help coming from? Is it coming from the baseline? Is it coming from Kobe White at the nail? Kobe White's here. He's not committed. So Luka's going to keep going. Okay, no one's committing. No one's committing. No one's committing. I'll just go up. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Like, if, if no one's going to show their hand or come in double, then I'll just go score. And that's what makes it tough because 
you mentioned you look at these plays, he's hit you in pick and roll, hit you on some ISOs if you switch. Now he mixes in the post-ups, and then you're thinking, okay, how do we maneuver our defense to kind of handle this moving wheel of sorts offensively? And, and then you put it all together in pick and roll with the concepts that Nikias has brought up to where, yeah, this wing is clear. We may not have the personnel or the big that we want to switch. We want to make sure we take him away. We've got two in the ball. Vucevic is at the level. Visually, Chicago is in right now. What we talked about, boxes and elbows, their weak side, they're all in at the elbows. The thing that Luka does is, because it's a high pick and roll, now I can lead the dance. Another good screen by Lively. Caruso's got a chase. And now Luka's just engaging. He's engaging. And if you notice, when he got it to that wing, the weak side is in, Levine is in, it looks great for Chicago, but then Luka hesitates and holds Vooch. He keeps engaging with another dribble. And that dribble forces Vooch to engage and hold. And because Vooch has the hold, you know who else has the hold, Nikias? Zach Levine. And because Zach Levine has the hold, you know what's open? The corner skip. And that's that's where he's able to use that size to his advantage and kind of work defenses and manipulate them into situations that he and Dallas wants. Just the pacing that he comes off of the screen with. Because he could have stopped here, hesitates, he goes again. That keeps Alex Caruso behind him, which further heightens the importance of Vooch staying attached. And you can see, Zach Levine peeled in. He has to count for this. Kobe White is technically doing the right thing. He has to sink, he has to sink and split. He has to lean towards the corner. But look at Luca's eyes. Hard to see right here. He's kind of eyeing Jaden Hardy as he lifts on this. And he still manages to throw this pass not only to the corner, but pass it a little bit deeper in the corner, which brings Josh Green over just a little bit more making it a longer closeout for Kobe White, who's already in a tough position, and he nails it. There just isn't much you can do with Luka Doncic when he's locked in like this. Thanks for watching. If you want more of us from the Donker Spot, we will be on the channel every Tuesday for our usual brand of breakdowns and hoops. Uh, if you want more of the Donker Spot in general, you can subscribe to us. We are on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching again. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, man, smash that like button. Uh, click on the ring, the bell. Uh, subscribe, comment. Tuesdays are for the dunkers, so we'll be back. <laughs>